Marioni and Dylan Hand ready to show down with two different takes on the Golos archetype. Jeremy Batarioni playing Golos Fires, combining two of the pressure points of the format. Going to be taking on Dylan Hand playing Bant Golos. And, and this is just another iteration where we said we need to see the Golos decks play a couple of tournaments. So, yeah, many, many matches in order to figure out what the better builds are of the deck. And I, I like exploring things like Fires of Invention and Golos because it's just such a powerful card. Yeah. Yeah, incredibly impactful spells there. Over on Dylan's side, we were looking at 30 lands for Bant Golos. 30 <laughs> beautiful lands. What a world we live in. Up to some tricks is Dylan Hand, Fae of Wishes in the main deck. That seems to become pretty prevalent at this stage. One Jace, Wielder of Mysteries in the sideboard to go get. Close the game out in that fashion. I like that technology a lot. Popularized by Brad Nelson. I think it's really good stuff. Too many Beanstalk Giants in this deck, though. <laughs> I'm on an, an anti-Beanstalk Giant crusade all day today. You, you just don't like vegetables, I think, is what it I, is. I'm a vegetarian, Craig. I love vegetables more than most people on the mm, planet. I'm not picking that up with the uh, story you're telling it's over this there. particular vegetable I have a problem with. Just beans. Yeah, just, just these Beanstalks. I really dislike them. Tell us a little bit about Jeremy Batarioni's deck. What are we doing over on his side? So when, when you play the Fires of Invention, um, like you just want to get it on the board and then obviously restrict it two cards a turn, but you often don't cast more than two cards a turn in the mid to late game with this deck anyway. Very true. Uh, one, one important note is that you can still pay mana for spells if you want to. Yep. So something like Hydroid Crisis, you still just cast it for the maximum amount possible mm -hmm. and you get to draw your cards and, and have a big creature. Yeah, interesting. Batarioni has turned to four Fey of Wishes and a huge wish board in the sideboard. 13 one ofs, two Agent of Treachery is the game plan for Batarioni. Which are still, yeah, still wish targets, right? Right. Well, Agent of Treachery is not. You have to get non creature Oh, non creature of course. All right. I've done that a few times when building my wish boards for Fae of Wishes, and I'm like, man, Agent of Treasure would be sweet here. And I'm like, wait a second. Doesn't work that way. You can get a land, which is neat sometimes. I don't know. Does Bertarioni have any land in the sideboard? Don't think so. Nope. That's a neat little trick. I've done that a few times with my Fae of Wishes. Gotten a Karn's Bastion from my sideboard when playing the Planeswalker version. It is funny looking at the sideboard, and it's very similar to the you know, the red, white, blue Fires of Invention deck. Yep. Where you've got a bunch of off-color cards that you, you, like, once you have fires, you're just casting them for free. Yeah. So both players just doing their thing, developing their mana right now. You see Teferi on Dylan's side. That horrible, horrible beanstalk giant off on an adventure right now. Oh, maybe it'll get played for free later. Uh, I think that's on Dylan's side, so that one's not coming out for free. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> Maybe you can get me on board with Beanstalk Giant as a free, like, 2020. Maybe then I start getting excited about it. 10-10's like not good enough for you. No, no, no. <laughs> not enough. Here's Securitas Route from Batarioni. Looks like we already have five lands on the battlefield. You know what that means. You know what happens when you cast her out with five lands already on the battlefield. Thriller dance? Yeah, it's, it's time for zombies. Craig will be showing off his Thriller dance between rounds. No, I, I just did it now. If it, sorry, if you missed it, that was the one time. Oh, good thing I recorded it. Nice. Make sure to get that one up. <laughs> Both players casting Securitas route, Dylan doing so with the benefit of Teferi's Plus. So I was thinking about it, and, and we, need, we need entrance music. Who would you like entrance music for? Us? Yeah, the two of us. Okay. Start of the round, get a little hype going. Okay. What would your entrance music be? Well, we'd have to agree upon it, which might be a... Oh, you're, we're not doing split Oh, you themes. want us to walk in one at a time? I kind of want my own theme, yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of into that. Come down the aisle with your manager, like a wrestling thing? Yeah, I could use a manager. That would be dope. All right. My entrance music would be Lullaby by The Cure. What do you think of that entrance music choice? Um, it's not as hype as you would expect. Yeah, I was going to say. It's kind of like creepy and ominous, just like this beanstalk giant, which will ominously enter the battlefield as a 7-7. Seven, seven. 
boy, do I hate this magic card. <laughs> Yes, you do. You're just like, <laughs> really? You're just going after this poor guy? No, no. You look, it gets better in Dylan's deck because Dylan is playing a Kenrith the Return King, as is Jeremy. Both these players with access to that card. Jeremy has two copies two, of Kenrith, Yeah, two's a lot. But here you see the problem with this Beanstalk Giant. Like, okay, now we have six power worth of zombies over on Jeremy's side. Well, nine power altogether when you put Golos in the mix. But how is this Beanstalk Giant ever going to make a profitable attack without the assistance of Kenrith? Play cards that are good on their face, not cards that require assistance to be playable. Well, I, to be fair, there are non-giant Wrath of Gods. Yes, that is true. Which doesn't come up a lot, but when it does... Our, our Beanstalk Giant is just cleared for takeoff. Yeah, I, I would rather just account for that by playing more Time Wipes than Realm Cloak Giant, which I think is fine anyway at this point. I, I basically have a 2-2 split at sure. this point, and I, I think that's the way to go if you're playing Bant. Plenty of zombies in the mix. Here's a big Hydroid Crisis. Looks like six. That actually seems like a small hydroid crisis these <laughs> days, which is a very troubling thing to say. But well, what's absurd is just like you—you you have this huge beanstalk giant. You got this big crisis, and like Dylan hands on the defensive, right? Yeah, absolutely. Like he's just going to get run over in two turns by an army of zombies. Scary spot to be in. Looks like we are going to minus that to ferry. Get some value now. Makes sense. You want to at least get your card out of it. You know it could die to this army of zombies. Yeah, and it kind of an interesting uh, decision tree there for Dylan where he wanted to look at the cards off of a Hydra Crisis before he decided what he wanted to do with his Teferi. Mm -hmm. Because I would have... Generally, I'd want to draw the extra card with Teferi. Get more information. Before sure. I tied up all of my mana for the turn. Eh, interesting. It's like a chump attack from the zombies. You know some of them are dying. That's okay. Bunch of mana has been tapped. It's time for a big crisis. A slightly bigger crisis, I believe, is the count on this one. Yeah, I see two dice. That means seven will be the number for this <laughs> crisis. Anything you can do, I can do better, says Jeremy. Going to play a land, get a couple more zombies. Passes the turn back to Dylan. Yeah, if you do not like zombies, this is not the metagame for you. It's not the format for you. Yeah, if you have like a deep-seated fear of zombies. Maybe you had a bad zombie experience once. Yeah, well. Lived through a horror movie. I think most zombie experiences are bad zombie experiences, but. but Dylan going to go ahead and resolve once upon a time here. Yeah, I don't think everyone has a zombie experience. Right, though. very true. Some folks have just led a sheltered life. Ooh. Here's Kenrith for Dylan. Nice little grab. See if we can leverage that card here. It's it, it's pretty spicy. He's got another giant off on adventure. So I was streaming earlier this week with Bant Golos. And when I tell you that no fewer than 100 people came into my stream and asked me what I thought about Kenrith, I'm not exaggerating. I literally, <laughs> I literally had my mod set a command, exclamation point, Kenrith. So it would just share my opinion with Kenrith, uh, about Kenrith at the touch of a button. Sure. I couldn't answer the question anymore. You didn't want to just keep, keep repeating yourself over and over? I, I was exhausted. I'm like, I can't talk about this card anymore. So, all right. So, so hit us once right now for the weekend. Medium, not better than the other cards presently in the deck was my take. Okay. So, so does that mean you're fine with one of it? I can see it replacing one of the Hydroid Crisis slots. Okay. But I'm inclined to just play Hydroid Crisis. I think it's just better. But again, if you're playing Beanstalk Giant, you're almost priced into it. So I will just, I will just see that my list is different at this point. I, I think about this deck differently than most of these players do. And maybe I will be proven to be old and outdated and <laughs> crotchety and unwilling to change. We will see. Out of the tournament, back into the booth. With right. You. Yeah. Right. That's enough gameplay from you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can definitely see the draw of Kenrith. All, all the abilities on it are very powerful. They um, are. It, it, They're expensive, though. And, like, it, it doesn't... 
Like, drawing cards from Kenrith is nowhere near drawing cards from Hydroid Crisis. And the thing is, when you top deck a Hydroid Crisis, you are immediately accelerated into your next play. Sure. With Kenrith, I think that process takes a little bit longer. And for me, this deck is a lot about inertia. And you just always want to keep your inertia trains rolling. I think things like Kenrith can be a stop to that. I think casting a Beanstalk Giant for seven is a stop to that. I want to maximize my inertia in all spots. And... Look, it could just be different schools of deck building and thought at this point. And if you are maximizing the cards in your deck, you can make what I perceive as weaker cards the correct card to be playing. I don't want to make it sound like I am right, everyone else is wrong. This is just my opinion. Here's a post-combat deafening Clarion. That's going to go ahead and clean up that Kenrith. So Batarioni definitely seeing it as a threat. It's going to clean up everything but the Giant, I think. I think you're right. Yeah, all these crisis and zombies need to leave as well. There they go. They'll be back. I have a feeling. Now it's time for our first fave wishes of the day. There you see fave wishes, one of our new adventure cards. Granted, you may choose a non-creature card you own from outside the game, reveal it put it into your hand, and that is exactly what Patarioni is doing presently. Going to look for a fresh card from the sideboard. It, it looks like he just got on more to ego. He got on more right ego. Away. He absolutely did, and that means that's going to be it for Dylan's Fields of the Dead, I'm assuming. We'll make sure that's the name. Correct. Yep. It is, in fact, Field of the Dead. And it's interesting that... It, I, we're kind of seeing the opposite side of Kenrith here, where Jeremy seemed to be just way far ahead on the board, mm -hmm. but the Kenrith combined with the Beanstalk Giants was, was threatening enough where Jeremy actually cashed in a, a Golos and his whole board in order to make sure he got the Kenrith off the table. Sure. Yeah, Kenrith coming down, presenting an immediate threat. The Patarioni had to answer. Some results from our other games. Joe Lissette up a game against Urza Outcome. And Zan Syed up a game against Rudy Briska's team Del Teamer Delver. Zan playing Nia Loam this week. Saw that deck show up in large numbers when you and I were up in Syracuse. Felt like kind of the breakout deck from the tournament. Made the top eight in the hands of Kane Reinhardt. Yeah, a lot of innovation happening in, in Legacy right now. Oh, absolutely. Here's another Beanstalk Giant going immediately on an adventure. May not be on that adventure for very long, though. A lot of mana available for Dylan Hand. And Batarioni, interestingly enough, doesn't have those main deck Wraths. Does have a sideboard Time Wipe, yep. which is accessible via Fey of Wishes. Don't know if there's another Fae of, of Wishes in hand for Batarioni. There is that one on an adventure. There would be a lot of mana invested. Not sure if we have enough to make that play. Let's see. I will tell you, though, these two Beanstalk Giants, now that Kenrith is no longer an issue, they could be chumped in perpetuity. Yeah, I yeah, think. they're going to get jammed up. But same thing. It, you know, a, a giant Wrath of God here is lethal at this point. Right. And Batarioni does have a second Fae of Wishes. Able to go back to the sideboard. Has planar cleansing as well. There is the time wipe you see pulled a little bit aside. That is going to be the get and the play. Time wipe dealing with both those beanstalk giants. Feels like Jeremy's starting to turn the corner now. Passes the turn, no land drop. So that's one way those Giants could have gotten through. Sure. Uh, yeah, definitely. You still have to like Jeremy's position, though. It just it, it feels like Dylan's only going to be able to do one thing a turn. Right. And without bonus zombies coming along while he does one thing a turn, it, it just feels like he's fighting from behind. Yeah, Dylan getting lower on ways to win the game. But this is a really, really good one. A particularly large crisis. 10-10. That's not going to be chump blocked. And Bertarioni again needing to find an answer to this crisis. If Bertarioni could just go off, just get a turn to do his thing, he would assemble a zombie legion so large 
that he would be able to pull away, but he's missed a bunch of land drops in a row. His hand's a little gummed up right now. Yeah, and his opponent just hasn't given him that, that breathing room. Absolutely. Just every turn he's saying, you got to answer this giant, you got to answer that giant, you got to answer this Hydra Crasis, you got to get Kenrith off the board. I see Securitas route in Baturioni's hand. That would make a bunch of zombies. Four, to be precise. Has a Krasis in hand. Yeah, he's in this weird spot where he, he can afford to take one shot from the opposing Krasis, so I think this is his turn. I think so. Where, where you set up doing whatever it is you want to do. Charioni agrees. Going to go ahead and cast a Krasis. X is eight, I believe. Draws four. And finds fires, does find a land. It's a temple as well. He's gonna get a scry. Two zombies. And if he has another deafening clarion, he can actually pick up another turn by giving all of his creatures lifelink and attacking with mm, everyone next very turn. Very true. So, so that's, that's the breathing room that we were talking about, right? Like, this is the turn. Got a big body on the board. Got a couple of zombies. Next turn, he might be able to have a very similar turn. Right. Does have Clarion in hand. Didn't see what the discard was there. Yeah, that's an interesting angle for this deck to get access to, is the lifelink from Clarion. Not one you see in the default list, but you put some big bodies on the board. Can definitely win a lot of racing situations that way. <laughs> Looks like Dylan's going back to the well here. It was a good play last time. Thinks it'll be a good play once more. Yeah, this is getting out of control. Another 10-10 crisis. Man, how absurd. Looks like that one's just going to come through. Arboreal Grazer from hand. Followed by Thornwood Falls. Just going to gain a little bit of life. <laughs> a bunch of discards coming. Yep. Second land drop there from hand. Thanks to Arboreal Grazer. And the turn headed back to Batarioni. What can Jeremy put together on this turn to buy a bit more time? Would still be facing down a lethal attack next turn, even if gained a bit of life here. It's like it's Fae of Wishes time. And we're going to discard two cards, return Fae of Wishes to hand. Are we going to get crazy here? What's the grab here from the sideboard? That's the question. There's a chance for glory in the sideboard. There's a Legion's End, too. Ooh, Legion's End is good here. Legion's End is spectacular here. Yeah, I, that's, I mean, that's the grab. Two mana open. Here's Legion's End on the Hydroid Crisis. That is huge. Yeah. Good stuff Damn. from Batarioni. That, that, I mean, that's like a well-built sideboard right there. You played for this exact situation. And Legion's End answers both Hydroid Krasis and now Batarioni firmly back in the driver's seat. Making two more zombies. And part of this to me, it, it, it shows how good the Fae of Wishes is. Sure. Where in, in this late game where you just have all these extra cards in your hand from drawing off of Krasis nonstop, it's great to just be able to discard them and tutor. Yeah, absolutely. Man, what a ridiculous game. And there is the attack from Batarioni. Passes back to Dylan Hand. Says, what you got? We know Dylan with a ton of resources. I mean, if you added up the total amount of power that was deployed this game. Crazy. Crazy stuff. Yeah, I wonder if... if 
Dylan had been more patient with Kenrith, if if he possibly could have, you know, used it for an alpha strike, mm -hmm. that would have finished this game off. I think that is a very good question, Craig. That's not the world we live in, and Dylan trying to figure out a way out of this position. Looks like a Realm Cloak Giant is step one. Cast for the adventure side. That's going to go ahead and wrap the board. <laughs> it's so ridiculous that these games just don't end. Like, it, normally you, you watch a game play out like this, and the first Hydra Crisis comes down, and that player just has way too much of an advantage. Right. Now it's not enough. Yeah, well, now they just both do it over and over. Yep. Crazy stuff. I wonder if Faye of Wishes is just the tech here. Like, like Fires feels a little bit like nonsense to me when you already have all the mana in the world. But maybe just Faye of Wishes is supposed to be in this deck. Okay, so, so you need to adjust your wish package a little bit, right? Of course, of course. But, like, you saw how powerful just being able to get Legion's End. You saw how powerful Unmoored Eagle, yep. all these cards easily castable. Yep. You could go get Assassin's Trophy reliably. Casualties of War, you're pushing things, but you can do it. You can do it if you really want to. Your deck has double block. Black, you're casting tons of Securitas routes. If you're playing Beanstalk Giants, you can play a basic Swamp if you think that's needed. Now, Dylan here has deployed... Golos. Gol like, he had the opportunity to get a, a, a big giant on the board, and he chose not to do it, mm -hmm. which makes me think he, he's transitioning from attack you to, to win to potentially use my fave wishes to, to tutor up... I'm sorry, four drop Jace. Yep. And deck myself and win that way. Yeah, Jace, wielder of mysteries. Thank you. Yeah, and it's interesting to note, for all the wishing that goes on on Batarioni's side, does not have a copy of Jace, wielder of mysteries. That's interesting. There you see Jace... Important part here, if you don't get it, it's the static ability. If you would draw a card while your library has no cards in it, you win the game instead. And Dylan can just work to that point. Deck himself. Already drawn a ton of cards with those Hydroid Crisises. Yeah, I mean, w one more Crisis is going to just get the lion's share of his deck at this point. Absolutely. He has all of those beautiful lands in play. And we're going to start Golosane as well if Dylan gets the turn back with that Golo still on the battlefield. Tarioni now just making incredible amounts of zombies. Three Field of the Dead out there. Do you think he has access to a Golos activation if he so chooses? Instead, going to cast Beanstalk Giant. No, false start. Cast gonna cast that beanstalk giant. <laughs> <laughs> Do have a result in our modern match. Joe Lissette playing mono green Tron took down Urza Outcome. Two games to zero. Joe Lissette been carefully working on his mono green Tron list over the past few months. Has played that deck for a long time. Some significant changes though. Playing main duck Thrag Tusk now. Yep. Is Joe Lissette. Does not care about Once Upon a Time. No copies. Okay. In his Tron deck. I agree with Joe. I don't think it's very good in Tron. Yeah, I, I think Tron, because of four drop Karn, is well positioned against these uh, Urza decks. And then you can tweak your main deck in order to have a decent matchup against the burn decks as well. All those beautiful lands in play. And what those lands are going to allow Dylan to do, get to casting a lot of stuff. Two Securitas routes, a Fey of Wishes. Dylan now with access to all the mana in the world. And now I think I just like Dylan's position all of a sudden, just on the back of this Fey of Wishes. Think he might be able to find a way to hold on, potentially deck himself. 
I can't believe this is what we're playing towards in standard. Like, this is such a crazy, crazy method of determining who wins is Faye of Wishes. Yeah, it's pretty wild. To go get my Jace, so I deck myself. Can I get time wipe first? No reason to get the Jace now, yep. of course. There'll be plenty of rebuys on that Faye of Wishes when Dylan is ready for it. Just needs to hold the ground for a little bit longer. It's pretty sweet. Gets to rebuy the Golos, too. Seems good to me. Here is the time wipe. That is going to clear the battlefield. Looks like Dylan chose to get back Arboreal Grazer instead. Probably has another... Golos in hand would be my guess. Yeah, probably. Now Dylan looking at his options on this turn. Yeah, I think if he, he's wondering if he wants to save that Arboreal Grazer potentially to pitch to the Fae of Wishes. Mm -hmm. Dylan is going to go ahead and cast Fae of Wishes, looks like. And is going to return it to hand as well. And, and I like doing that here while the opponent is tapped out so that you don't expose your Fae of Wishes, which is now your win condition, to any sort of removal. Right. Yeah, Dylan not blessed with the luxury of an open deck list here. Doesn't know exactly what Jeremy could be playing. Well, he knows that Jeremy has his own Fae of Wishes too. Sure. Which could get anything. Anything. It could be a boat. Nobody knows. Here's Fabled Passage. That's going to make three zombies. Sounds like there are ten cards left in Dylan's library. Getting very close to that Jace threshold. Needs to work through eight more cards, then activate Jace. To mill himself with the ability, draw a card, win the game. Yeah, and I think, I think part of it is he would like to deploy Jace and then cast a Krasis for, for enough to just win the game right there. Sure, that's a nice setup as well. So what is Jeremy's plan on this turn? To have a way to insulate himself from the Jace plan. Taking a look at the sideboard here. Yeah, he'll, like, go get Tamio, minus Tamio to get back Unmoored Ego. What, what's the text on Chance for Glory? Let's get that one up on screen. We'll take a look at Chance for Glory and figure out exactly what that does for us. Or maybe Jeremy will just show us. Who I was knows? about to say, it, it's probably just happening right yeah, here. Yeah, I, I think this is it. It's and I th This is Jeremy attempting to win the game. Chance for Glory, creature you control, gain indestructible, take an extra turn after this one. At the beginning of the next end step, you will lose the game, but Jeremy's going to win the game off the back of essentially a hasty attack from Chance for Glory. Yeah, so, so that card to me, is, it's a pseudo Kenrith. Sure. Right? Like, yeah, yeah. Like you, you a new way to get haste for your team. Yeah, you just need to get an attack step in when you make all of those zombies. That was an insane game. My that brain absurd. is melted right now. I mean, how many times did it look like one side was taking the advantage back from the other side? Uh, if we had an advantage bar here on the SDG Tour, it would have been bouncing back and forth across the screen like a game of Pong. Like, it was well, ridiculous. If I loaned you that $100... Right. You would have made several losing wagers in there and I'd, lost it instantly. I'd be down so much if I was able to wager on that game. Thank God nobody would take my action. All right, I can't do that again, Craig. I, I just can't. Let's go watch Legacy instead. Please, give me a break. Let me take a moment away from these Golos decks. There'll be plenty more Golos <laughs> as the day goes on. I promise Golos lovers at home, you will get your share of Golos before this tournament is over. Let's watch a match of Legacy between two great Legacy players, Zan Syed, Rudy Briska, Nia Loam versus Timur Delver. You're getting tired of 20 permanents on each side? Yeah, just, just enough. I'm, I'm too dumb for this, Craig. I can't hang. 
on these battlefields. Sounds like Xan on a mulligan to five. Tough spot, but he is on the play. And right, and you can certainly recoup a bunch of cards very quickly with something like Life from the Loam. Yeah, that's the exact thing I was going to say. Just one Life from the Loam, and, and you're just right back in it. Pretty stock-looking list from Briska here. One Oko in the main deck for Rudy. There it is. That is our legacy Oko. Let's see if it can make it onto the battlefield. Meanwhile, over on Zan Syed's side, this is the same Naya Loam setup we saw just a few weeks ago in Syracuse. Elvish Reclaimer based deck, I would say. Three Elvish Reclaimer, four Knight of the Relicary can use that to very quickly put together a big indestructible 2020. Also has access to all those good stuff, Wasteland Locks. Four copies of Ren and Six. An Oko. Yeah, I mean, it's got applications. Think, it, of, think about it against something like Reanimator, where you just invalidate their huge reanimation target. Yeah. There's other weirdo stuff you can pick off. The, the one thing I've learned, the more I play with Oko, the more I realize it does. It's just cap It's so versatile. It's capable of getting you out of so many situations. It's capable of being pressure in and of itself. Yep. One, it never leaves the battlefield. It just starts right. with so much loyalty. Right. Especially in a format like Legacy, where the focus isn't the battlefield. It's not all about just loading up a bunch of permanents. Well, no, it'll take a lot of the little guys, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I buy it. I mean, I, I think there's there has to be like a specific texture to the format for it to be a successful card, but I think this format checks those boxes. Sure. I'm with you. So we saw Zan go get an Elvish Reclaimer via Green Sun Zenith. On Rudy's side, we're going to see a Brainstorm. Try and sculpt that hand a little bit. See Engineered Explosives, Wasteland, Delver. I think that's a Hex Drinker. Yep. Tarmogoyf, Tormod's Crypt. All kinds of options for Rudy here. The Hex Drinker's a little strange to me. If you found room for Oko in the deck, I feel like, you know, Hex Drinker would be like the next card out kind of a thing. Well... Rudy playing two copies of Hex Drinker. We see that card in varying numbers. I've seen it all the way from one to three, basically. Mm -hmm. Two sitting kind of right in the middle. And an interesting line that Rudy took this game. He, he had the opportunity to wasteland his opponent on turn one. Right. And he chose not to do it. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, against an opponent that's on the play that's already molded the five, I, I feel like... A high percentage of the time, they're not going to have very many other lands in their hand, and this is just a, a high EV play. I'm inclined to agree with you. And we do know that Zan needed the help of a green sun to go find that Elvish Reclaimer. Going to play Mox Diamond, pitching Bajuka Bog. Now we're up to four mana all of a sudden. Yeah. Active Elvish Reclaimer on the battlefield. Knight of the Relicary. Pass the turn back to Rudy. Zan is going to get a lot of redundant combo pieces now, should he choose. It's a good way to respond to that. It's Wasteland from Rudy. Delver did not flip. Yeah, and this is a strange spot for, for Rudy with those Wastelands. I think Zan has access to the tools he needs to slow down a little bit. Figure out exactly how he wants to navigate through this wasteland. And Rudy's also being very cagey with a Tormod script over there as well. Mm -hmm. Zan going to tap that Taiga. Cast a second 
Elvish Reclaimer. Oh, man. A lot of lands over on Rudy's side. Well, it's so funny how quickly he went from potentially being able to control the game with his own wastelands to being on the receiving end of the wastelands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a scary change of pace from this Naya deck. Here's a second Delver. Here's Tormod's Crypt. Yeah, that Crypt's just gotten better and better as this game's going along. Oh, absolutely. Second Wasteland in hand for Rudy, but nothing but lands in hand, meaning any gas going to come off the top. That's scary against all those active abilities over on Zan's side of the battlefield. Not going to play second Wasteland, just deploys a fetch land. Yeah, with that Crypt on the board, Rudy can very effectively hide uh, behind his Termogoyf. It's going to be super hard for Xan to get into the red zone. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, Rudy's kind of in a holding pattern where he just wants to flip these Delvers. And then, you know, be able to be aggressive from the air. Sure, that makes sense to me. Basic land for Zan. Going to go get snow-covered plains. One of Craig's favorite lands. Oh, this don't. Why do you got to get me started on he the snow-covered lands, Brian? Love snow-covered. We're lands. having such a nice day. One of his favorite things. The we, Modern Horizons format added. We haven't talked about Astrolabe yet. We, we haven't true. talked about the snow lands, and then you just go and torpedo my whole good mood. My habitual button presser. I guess so. I can't I, help myself. We could have just done the thriller dance all day. Nope. That's nope. over. That's over now. Oh. Now we're doing the snow covered basic dance, which is not as cool. It really isn't. Ask Craig to show it to you next time you run into him. He will do it. Man. Can we at least show up with like Ice Age? Snow covered land. Nope, full arts. Full arts only. Craig, who is the edge in this game right now? Well, like I said, it, 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 it's this pretty interesting spot where, where neither player can get aggressive right now. Like, uh, Zian can rebuild quite quickly after the crypt is popped. Sure. Like, like he'll be able to just get lands in his graveyard very fast again making its creatures large. Right. So, so Rudy is just sitting there waiting to pop the crypt. You know, he's saying, force me to do this. Otherwise, I'm just going to sit behind it for now. And, and like I said, Rudy really wants to just hit an instant or sorcery. Flip those delvers. Those delvers. It yeah. feels like that's the break point. But we know the first one won't flip. Rudy able to get a shuffle and a new check for the second delver. Looks like it also will not flip. And now, in upkeep, Zan is thinking about some effects. Couple more wastelands, maybe? No. Just going to head the turn Ooh. back. Spicy little draw from Rudy. I mean, for not flipping, that's one of the best ones you yeah, can that's, hit. That's I sure. think that's as good as it gets for a non-flip Delver. And there's still other spicy ones in there. Ren and Six is a pretty interesting card. Mm -hmm. Looks like Rudy debating an attack with the Tarmogoyf here. Yeah, I, I, I'm not in love with the Tarmogoyf attack. I, it forces him to use the crypt. Right. But well, you don't even care about that because you can just rebuild your Reclaimer activation off the double Reclaimer. Th that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. 
you want Zan to force you to use the crypt in some way first. Right. Because it means he's expended a bunch of resources to make you do that. Yep. That makes sense to me. So now we have a Knight of the Relicary activation. Reliquary. People didn't like the way I pronounced that card last week. In fairness, they were right. But <laughs> if you're coming here for good pronunciation, you're in you're in the, the wrong place. Let me tell you. Gosh darn people! All right. And I think part of what Rudy's doing here with the second wasteland is just making sure he doesn't die to a twenty twenty. Right. You know, it, it was kind of like, oh hey, why didn't he deploy the true name nemesis this turn? Beezer would have tied up three of his lands. Absolutely. And exposed him to potentially dying to a 2020. Yeah, just playing it slow and safe. Now Zan has picked up a pair of wastelands on his side. Boy, this is some good old fashioned legacy, isn't it? <laughs> I I love these waiting games where it's kind of like, all right, who's gonna make the other person do something first? Mm-hmm. Looks like we are responding at some point to something. No. Psych. That's right. I just dropped a psych. Look at you. I don't care that it's 2019. Another land off the top for Zan. Don't think he minds all that much. Like, lands are fine draws here. No, the, the lands are good. Now that he's gotten his wastelands, he can attack the opposing wastelands. Force them off of the board and then start building towards that 2020 right. we were talking about. Right, and that may be the play coming very soon. And in the meantime, Rudy hasn't been able to flip those Delvers, so he's not pressuring the opponent. Yeah, disastrous top of the deck from Rudy. It does look like it's time for Wasteland your Wasteland now. Wasteland your Wasteland again. Makes sense to me. And that goes through. So I think with the first one, Rudy's supposed to just go after the Windswept Heath. Yeah. Could do that. I, I don't think it... it I, don't th I don't think it matters, but I, it, it's optimal. And does Zan just want to go for it here? Set up Vespian's stage. Now, now, Brian, we said <laughs> we said we wanted to jump over to Legacy. Right. Because we wanted to see things happen. Right. And we didn't want a board that was all gummed up with 100 permanents. Right, 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 right. Well, what the heck happened? Uh, not that. Not that at all. How does this just keep happening to us? I, this is our curse today, Craig. This is what we will be dealing with. Go Meanwhile, on. over in the standard match, Jeremy Bertarioni takes it down. So this match is to determine the entirety I this love set. this match. I mean, this is just super interesting to me, all these little decisions that have to get made, mm. a lot of positioning. Uh, you, you know, e each one's waiting for the other to uh, pull the trigger first, so to speak. Sure. Like, I like that, but I thought we were just going to see some beatdowns, a few counterspells and wastelands, and the, the, that's that, you know? Guess not. This is not what we're here for. Time for Green Sun Zenith for zero. That means... Dryad Arbor likely to be the get here. And now we just need to see when Zan wants to go for this lethal 2020. Imagine he would love some backup here, some safety. Time for Delver triggers. No. Oh, wow. Swing and a miss again. Going to crack. Fiery Islet draws Lightning Bolt. True Name Nemesis attacks. Man, those two Delvers have sat on this board for the Forever. entire game. Forever. If they flip, this looks a lot different, for sure. And, and oh, man. Zan's going to be able to put together. Yep. Zan going to get... Dark Depths.
Headed back to Zan's turn. Slow and steady, says Zan. Could have made the 2020 at several points already, choosing not to. Well, yeah, so that turn, uh, the dried arbiter had summoning sickness, right? It did. I, I don't think he could have done it that okay, last turn. Okay, he was mana short. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was looking at it too. But ultimately, Zan is going to slowly put together I, the combo. I mean, that's just.